Nine years ago, animation channel Flashkits made a video called Inside GW, which poked fun at Games Workshop for its many aspects worth criticism. Fast forward to today, this entire video is still relevant, especially with relatively recent events. So last year, I put out a brief video discussing my grievances with Games Workshop. And as much as I enjoyed making that video, it had some issues that I'd like to iron out here instead. I know that a portion of my audience has been waiting for me to have a more in-depth discussion about this subject, and I'm finally here to deliver. Games Workshop makes miniature games with its flagship IPs being Warhammer 40k and Fantasy slash Age of Sigmar. They also make other games like Middle Earth among plenty of spin-off games. Pretty simple table games involving reading data sheets, rolling a bunch of dice, and having a good time with friends. I'm a fan of Warhammer. I love playing Total War Warhammer. Like, a lot. Except the third one, because it's uh, kind of fucking shit right now. I'm heavily invested in the 3D printing community with friends. I like orcs. I really like orcs. And looting shit. Yes, I did these. Admire my superior orc engineering, you space marine playing fuckhead. But while Warhammer as a whole has a huge and devoted fan base, there is much disdain for the bloated behemoth that owns the intellectual property itself. Whenever I get into discussions about Warhammer, people tend to want to ignore the company's existence because at this point in the discussion, there are two entities. There is Games Workshop, and then there is the Warhammer community. The community made Warhammer what it is today, and the internet has been used by said community to introduce countless people to the IP in interesting ways. However, as much fun as the community has had in what it's created with the hobby, there have been hiccups. And I am here to discuss them in a more nuanced way than what I did the previous time. Keeping in mind, with the exception of purchasing Warhammer 3 for the purposes of review when Immortal Empires releases, I haven't bought a single GW product since the Beast Naga Army set. Oh yeah, and speaking of which... Anyways, let's dive into this shit. Now, I'd expect this to be a pretty cut and dry topic based on my values, but unfortunately it's not that simple to discuss. The ever-rising presence of 3D printers has presented quite the threat to the company, so knowing how GW operates, a jihad against 3D printing was declared. Before we move on, I have to state the obvious before the GW addicts load up their stupid arguments. Yes, the act of distributing GW 3D print files is illegal. But simply stating that as the end-all be-all in this discussion completely avoids the greater discussion that needs to be had. It's more than just 3D printing models because fuck Games Workshop lol, it's about the fact that they can't compete in their current state. A prominent example I always give is their offering for Titans to use in the tabletop game. Many people I speak to dream of being able to get one of these bad boys, but probably never will because of the obscene prices. Not only that, Forge World is notorious for the quality of its products being, well, dog shit and forcing the customer to adhere to its laziness. The products themselves often have issues like warping, which the customer who already paid the super premium price of working with super shit resin is forced to unwarp the material themselves. People I know who own behemoths such as the Warlord Titan often spend a lot more to also transport these models safely as well. On the other hand, why would you want to deal with all that nonsense when you could just have your Titan made out of a far superior resin, or even plastic, which is my preference, don't have to find super delicate transport options, all for roughly 10-30% to of the original price tag depending on what you do. Again, this is not exclusively a fuck games workshop for the hell of it issue, it's the fact that they offer a vastly inferior service. Of course, with the wide availability of higher quality printing, you'd kind of look like an idiot to not 3D print your own Titan at this point. Not only that, it's extremely easy to find these model files. GW regularly takes down pages on sites like Thingiverse that hold STL files, but no matter how many pages they try to take down, it's far too late. There are countless private file sharing groups on forums and other sites like Facebook who won't exactly host files on their pages to avoid takedowns, but will contain hundreds or even thousands of people that have just about everything that you could desire to share in private messages. These groups exist and will continue to grow in size and influence as time goes on, and GW can't do a single thing about it. 
Now, of course, I just gave one example of why people would want to turn to 3D printing piracy, but of course there are other reasons, such as wanting to print old models that Games Workshop doesn't sell anymore, or the simple fact that it's objectively cheaper to print out an army than buying the official models. Putting Forge World aside, the company is infamous for its high prices, and we will be talking about its unethical methods in getting people to pay even more. Many people struggle financially, and will cut legal corners if it means they'll be able to get the models they desire to have. People could also turn to third parties that exist as well. Among my favorites is GearGuts Mech Shop. If you're an orc kind of 40k fan like me, you have to check this site out. This guy has tons of amazing files on his site that you can just buy and print off, all being models that were made by GearGuts. This also includes amazing titans as well that friends of mine have printed off themselves. Now, I do encourage people to try and be a bit more original in their print designs because unfortunately GW will also try to go after you if your design is similar to their existing models. Despite this individual putting forth the effort to try and make his model have quite the multitude of differences, that doesn't stop the legal ninjas from coming after you, so please, if you're going to do this, be careful. But the point is, GW's grip on the Warhammer hobby is faltering more day by day, and I'm not sure if there is much they can do about it. 3D printers are widely available and have continued to improve over the years in their quality of prints, but as long as their inferior practices exist, there will be a growing descent in the Warhammer community to continue buying their models at a consistent rate. It's no question that the price of entry for a Games Workshop game drives many people away, and is frequent in hiking up their already bloated tags. However, there are also many instances where these price hikes exhibit an infuriating kind of business behavior. You see, there exists a specific army that you could play in the game where it's just regular humans, the Imperial Guard, or Oster Militarum, or... The Wall of Guns! ...is typically treated as a horde army where players have to buy a bunch more models than, let's say, a Space Marine player. There was an option for Guard players to buy these five packs of Cadians for $10 to fill out their infantry horde, or what have you. It was pretty good. However, in the middle of last year, GW discontinued this product, forcing guard players to buy the full infantry kit. If you wanted to have Cadian models specifically, you had to buy the kit that conveniently and recently had an extra option sprue put into it to justify a price hike. Once people paid an easy $10 to buy some extra infantry, and now have to spend $50 instead. A pretty good way to milk your customers even more than they already do. Now, of course, this is just one example. I'm sure many in the comments can give me more. To quickly add on to this, though, there's also also an inconsistency in offerings as well. There is a new Orc Boys kit as well as the old one. The old one is cheaper, includes 11 models instead of 10, and isn't monopose like the new one, but you can still buy it as of this recording. So Orc players still get to have relatively cheaper options to fill out their horde, but guard players don't. I don't think I'm stretching by any means here with my point, but speaking of inconsistency... This is the one that I've been the most vocal about. GW has had a negative history when it comes to how they handle those who infringe in huge quotations on their copyright. Before their actions against the community last year, there has been fun things like trying to bully book authors for having the words Space Marine on their book, going after a number of websites, and accidentally... Accidentally! ACCIDENTALLY! Totally accidentally, copyright claiming reviews of their Warhammer Plus service. But now the most recent focus has been on their policy against fan animations, that being, individuals must not create fan films or animations based on our settings and characters. These are only to be created under license from Games Workshop. QGW forcing fan animators to either quit or go work with them to have their work showcased on the newly released Warhammer Plus service, which enraged quite the amount of people because it came off as a join us on our shitty subscription service or die. Out of anything in this video to discuss, this is arguably the biggest blunder in its community relations, because this started what many people described as a nuking of the community. Millions of views in what is essentially free advertising for GW's IP disappeared, being locked off with the subscription service that not many people give a damn about. A parody series, if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device, which is one of, if not the most popular fan series, was suddenly left up in the air by Alphabusa out of fear of a potential legal battle that he wouldn't be able to handle. 
Texas speech dipping out caused a lot of people to be naturally upset, as it was seen by many to be the final straw, and that includes myself. Personally, I don't think that GW will ever change their policy towards fan animations, as they really want to push Warhammer Plus down the community's throats to have a monopoly on community content. It's funny because fan sites and fan art are allowed to exist under pretty understandable rules, but not animation because subscribe to Warhammer Plus. Oh boy, I love this one. Don't you guys love when the company constantly releases codexes that totally don't encourage people to buy specific models that have broken rules, then subsequently nerf them, and then do the same thing again? Or when you leave players like those who play Tau behind with one of the worst armies to play in 9th edition to sit there and wait for their good codex to drop? Hmm, don't you love it? Don't you love drip feeding content over an extremely long period of time when the faction that you play is in desperate need of updating while others are obviously overpowered in comparison? Hey Chaos players, didn't you love waiting to get two wounds for your marines for a ridiculous amount of time, even though it could have been a fairly easy change before their codex dropped? I'm sure the players were really happy about that. Seriously, stop this shit. This has been happening for quite some time now, and it needs to fucking stop. Keeping in mind, this section I'm leaving as up in the air due to its contents, but I feel the need to bring it up as it was something that I missed last time. So from what I could gather, it revolves around this modder named Radius who has made mods for Total War games, among them being Total War Warhammer. With GW's infringement crackdown last year, Radius was asked by an unspecified entity to remove links to his Patreon from the mod pages. This was shared around the overall Warhammer community, and it was met with a mixed response, at least from what I could tell. There were a multitude of people who were unsympathetic and also accused Radius of locking off modding content and betas behind paywalls, as well as theft from other modders. Radius, on the other hand, denies these claims, and personally I haven't seen an ounce of evidence to support the claims of the accusers, but I am also not 100% certain with the full story here. Regardless of how people feel about the ethics of modders receiving money for what they do with mods, it still left a sour taste in many people's mouths. Personally, I have no problem with modders receiving donations for the time they put into mods. It can present ethical problems when it comes to paywalling content, which I am absolutely against because it's modding, that's just not how it works. But the simple act of establishing a way to tip the mod creator really isn't that big of a deal. Once again, with the aforementioned Radius situation, I am unsure of a lot of what surrounds it as well as what he was accused of. Other modders have been affected by this, apparently, but I am unsure of that as well. Take away what you wish from this, it's just something that I have to bring up in this discussion. I'm going to say the same thing that I stated in my initial video. Because of everything that I have discussed here, I see no reason in supporting this company in any fashion. They have actively fucked over their most passionate fans for years, and it doesn't seem like they'll be held accountable anytime soon. When Texas Speech Device was left in hiatus, there was quite the amount of anger directed at the company for its actions, and for the first time, I genuinely thought something might happen. Nope. Everyone went back to normal, and it's like it never even happened. You see, Games Workshop doesn't have to worry about anything, because not only do they have the money to legally bully people, or make people just move on from their shitty practices by revealing the next shiny toy. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next products. They also have a front line of plastic addicts that will defend the company no matter what they do. Grown adults, oftentimes twice my age, unironically thinking they owe some company their hard-earned cash, when in reality they could give less of a shit about them. Every time I engage with people I actually know about this company's misdeeds, they are quick to dismiss them as not a big deal or they have the legal right to do what they do. Yeah, because the legal system is totally the basis for logic and morality. But Sarah, are you trying to say that everyone should stop buying GW products? Yes. But, but what about the local stores? The, the, the local stores, the, the local stores. I didn't say it'd be easy. Yes, it can be painful to not buy these products. But if the community truly cares about not wanting GW to constantly fuck the community, you take away the only thing the company cares about, the bottom line. Also, if your local store solely relies on selling GW products to stay afloat, yeah, um, it's not a good idea, just saying. Regardless, until the community ends their addiction to plastic crack, 
nothing will change. It's up to the community to save themselves. At this point, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have much faith in that. See you next time, I guess. Oh yeah, and uh, and fuck Warhammer Plus. Of course, a big thanks to my generous channel members. Big thanks to Riddle of Lightning, Dead in the Shed, Aishi, and B.